just need to grab one thing. I know exactly what aisle to go to also. Mm, butter. Butter, butter, butter. Wait a second. That looks like the perfect size. All right, that's what we need today. Look what I just found. Got here to the fishing spot. Someone's wallet must have been stuck on their lap as they got out of the car. Flopped out and they left it here. Dang, it looks like it's been out here for a while. So maybe they lost it a while ago, but well, no one's claimed it, you know. Got some money in here. If I could find this guy, I'm sorry for invading your privacy right now and looking at your stuff. I'm not trying to show you guys his information or anything, but damn. This is like, you've had one wallet your whole life and you never, never got it uh, replaced. No phone number though. Damn, that sucks, well, there's an address, so shoot man, I'll probably have to go back out here. Probably go stop by his place in San Francisco and drop it off. It's kind of away from my house, but we'll see. All right, let's, let's go down and uh, continue the video from yesterday. Let's try to catch an eel. And then we'll go find this guy, maybe, if we're lucky. If he's lucky, I guess. Ah, we made it. And you know exactly where I'm going. The first spot is the last spot I stopped at yesterday. Going to get that big eel in that hole over there. What the heck is this? It's a barrel of a gun? Or what? No. What the hell is that? It's weird. I'll toss it, I guess. It's weird though. Now, if you didn't see the video I did yesterday, basically I came out here and I said it was about three years since the last time I came out here and did this little saltwater puddle fishing, poke poling, pocket fishing, whatever you want to call it. And I described a fishing rig and how to tie the, the knot and the rig and the hook to the end of this big long bamboo stick. You can also use a fishing rod as your poke pole and the objective is to poke this into a hole and get whatever's in there to bite and get hooked so you can pull them out and potentially eat them. This right here is my preferred way to tie the leader onto the poke pole. So you got this coat hanger right here and that's tied and wrapped around your bamboo rod or stick or your fishing pole and you make a loop at the end of it and at the end of the loop, I take 50 pound fluoro or mono and I tie a knot to it and I tie the hook to it. I use 50 because it's stiff like this. And when I hold it straight up in the air, it stays erect. Now the other method to do this, you don't lose as many rigs, very similar. You tie the coat hanger around the fishing rod or the bamboo stick, and then you've got a snap swivel or some kind of a snap right there. And at the end of the snap, you do the hook. But as you can see, it's, it just flops around. It's very limp, right? It doesn't stick up and it's not like with the mono or the floral. So the first thing that hits the fish's mouth is the coat hanger. And he's not gonna bite a coat hanger, he wants to bite the bait. But if the bait isn't there, the coat hanger is gonna hit his head and he's gonna run away into the hole. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna tie on a small floral leader and then tie the hook onto that. So I got two stiff rods. I was gonna take out about 10 inches of this 50 pound floral doesn't really matter you can use floro or mono 65 80 pounds but 50 pound minimum this is the hook that i like to use it's a small one knot octopus drop shot but if you were to get this in a one knot j hook it would be way too big so something about this size depending what type of hook it is i'm just going to do a simple clinch knot to the end of this hook now i'm tying this 50 pound leader as close as i can to the end of this coat hanger see that right there that's what i'm talking about that's going to catch some eels today baby now I was up all night yesterday thinking about how I can improve the hookup ratio on these eels. Cause so many times you get the bites and you pull them out, but your bait is gone. They don't get hooked. So that got me thinking, what can I put on here to increase that ratio? So I got it right here. These are some sandworms. You can also use the Berkeley Gulp sandworms. These are from China, uh, not China. These are from Japan, but got me thinking I could thread this onto the hook. And if he wants to take it at all, he's going to bite at it. Ah, all right, this is the same spot as yesterday where I was getting those big bites. So I'm gonna bait up and get this eel. Let's 
see how these Japanese sandworms look. Look just like the gulp. It's gonna be interesting. I never really seen anybody fish for these eels with these sandworms before. If he were to take that, he's getting hooked. No doubt about it. So whenever anybody has ever gone poke polling, I've only seen them using one rod. And I'm pretty sure, now that I think about it, the same rules apply for poke pulling as they do for rock fishing. You're only allowed one rod per person when you're targeting rockfish. But I'm not targeting rockfish. Now, if you do catch a rockfish or an eel, in that case, yeah, you can only use one rod after that. But for now, I want to poke these two poles around and just see if I can get something to bite. I mean, this how, how much more efficient is this than just using one rod? I got squid too if these worms don't work, but I just feel like the hookup ratio would be so much better with this. I'm just gonna poke this around randomly as I focus on this main one right here. I figure this is a good time to get a good brain exercise too. You know, when you use both hands, you get work out your left brain and your right brain. Switch to the squid. And do a strip and try to thread it on like a worm. Just try to increase that hookup ratio. All right, there's that one. Just gonna let this sit here for a sec. Maybe it'll get a bit quick. Or maybe the eel's poking his head out on the other side of the hole, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna leave that there for a second while I rig this one up. Oh, he's on it, he's on it. He's on it. He's on it, he's on it, y'all. He's on it. Oh, I got him, I got him, he's on it, he's on it. Oh, he's trying to pull it in. Okay, I'm gonna get into position where I can throw him up onto this burlap sack. He's on it, and I got him, I got him good. There he is. Yee! Little guy, though. There we go, baby. It worked, man. Threading it on like that. There, check him out. Not too much stuff in his belly. This one does not have that, well, he does have a bright orange tip on his tail, but not too bright. Yeah, baby. Let's go, man. Let's go. Oh, stay on there, stay on there, stay on there, stay on there. Let's get him in the sack before he gets out. That squid, it's the secret. Perfect hook set though, right in the lip. Yeah, baby. Now I can soak the sack in the water, just keep him nice and fresh. That was quick and easy, dude. I didn't even have to use the other rod. All right, well, now we got one. I can't use that one anyway. So that's how I baited it. I just got it like this, and I just threaded it on. Threaded it on with small threads. Nothing crazy big. And then I got it just to the tip. That's another thing that I used to say a lot. If you find a fish or an eel in one hole, don't move to the next one so quick. There could be two or three in the same hole. So keep trying that one for another five, 10 minutes. Well, why don't we cook up this eel and then go return that guy's wallet? Well, I've been given this eel from this hole here. So if there's any other fish in here or any other crab, I hope they, they enjoy this and, and grow big and take advantage of some free food. I moved to a spot a little bit out of the wind. Got this eel right here. This is a perfect eel too, let me show you. Check out that eel. Perfect size, perfect size. And he's got these prickles on his back. I mean, you could just call them a fin, a dorsal fin, but they're kind of prickly, hence the name monkey face prickleback. So I'm gonna dispatch him so he has no chance to roll and run away and go into a hole. All right, we got a big rock here. We're gonna do this quick and clean so he doesn't suffer. One time hard on the head, because these things are really, really strong. Big rock, one, two, three. That's it for him. Do it one more time just to make sure. Okay. Now it looks a little bit cruel. He's dispatched right now. Those convulsions, that's exactly what it is. It's just nerves and muscles convulsing. That's the eel we're going to be cooking up right now. I'm going to rinse him off and gut him and clean him up ready to eat. I don't know if that eel is the main course or this is. There's 64 servings in here and I'm gonna cook it all at one time. You ever seen a stick of butter this big? I mean, that's what's in my dreams. I dream about this every single night. I'm gonna to try to waste as little of this fish as I can. 
I mean, it looks like a small prickleback, but there's actually quite a bit of meat on here. So how I'm gonna do this is gut it first because you just want at all costs to avoid any of the guts on these fish, especially if their bellies are full. All right, so I'm gonna cut around the butt. So we're gonna use this side of the cutting board and then when it's time to cook, cut up the meat, we'll flip it over and use the other side. Let gravity do its thing. Hold the intestines down for me while I cut up. I'm gonna cut all the way up to the throat. Just doing my best to avoid the intestines. Then you can cut around the gills here, around the mouth. And then you can pull out everything at one go. Now in my opinion, these smaller ones are the ones that are better to eat. When you get the big ones, it's just too hard to clean them without getting poop everywhere. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. This was the eel that was eating my bait from yesterday. And let's see what else he's been eating, just for the heck of it, okay? So there's his intestines, some more squid, and look at that, some kelp. Yep, they're vegetarians for sure. I'm gonna turn this over. Got it on the clean side now. Get all the sand off. You know, it doesn't matter what size knife you have. You can have a tiny one like this, or you can have a big one, as long as it's sharp. That's the most important thing. Just like with any knife, you wanna just follow along the rib cage. Follow along the spine. Get as close to it as you can. Just feeling that pop, 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 pop. And then you know you're on the spine when you feel that pop, 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 pop. All right, see that? That's a good chunk of meat right there. You know, I'm not ashamed to say that I take my time with my fillets. It might take me a little longer, but damn it, I keep them clean. All right, fillet number two. Right there. That's what we got. It's pretty clean right there. Not much meat wasted at all. So about three years ago when I came out here and made my first monkey face prickleback eel video, I was sent this knife by someone in the UK called Adrian Etheridge. And they've had this knife ever since. It's a beautiful custom knife, something that'll last me a lifetime. So if you want one, hit them up. Adrian Etheridge, you can find them on Instagram or check out the description below. I'm gonna skin this fish and that way I'll be able to cook the skin separately and try to use up every little part of this fish so nothing goes to waste. Most important thing you need, if you come out here, you only can get one ingredient and that's all you need, one stick of butter. And that's all it is, just one stick of butter. I'm gonna skim off all the bubbles on top and don't worry about this being a waste. After I get done cooking, I'm gonna let the butter cool down in the cold weather out here and I'm gonna bring it home and try to make some ghee, something that I can use at a high temperature and maybe even fry with in the future. Two pieces of meat, a lot of butter, and we're gonna give that, you know, 10 minutes maybe, maybe five minutes, five to 10 minutes. Look, you can actually have butter boiling and it's not burning because there's so much of it. Look at that, I've got this butter on a nice simmer. You ever heard of that before? Turn your butter on a nice simmer. Look at that meat, it's already cooking. This is gonna be done in a few minutes. Dude, it's looking good, man. Oh my God, that's perfect. Look at that. Dude, that's perfect. No seasoning, just butter. And the fish is actually done right now, it's perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is take out the fillets. I'm gonna put them on this frying pan here. Oh man, that's perfect, dude. This will break, oh yeah, that's done. That's done right there. I wonder if this is gonna change the flavor of it at all. Just cooking it in straight up butter like that, just, oh man, oh gosh, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna try one piece with just butter cooked. Ooh, that's so good. Ooh, that's delicious. No bones, no pin bones in these fish either. Mmm, mmm. Ooh, that's very, that's delicious. The texture is very nice and, it's nice and firm. Tastes like lobster a little bit. Ooh, that's really good. Really, really good. Mmm, that's like lobster, crab, except better. I'm gonna take a little bit of the butter from here, pour it in, and at the same time, I'm gonna put the skin inside too, and I'm gonna crisp that up. A little more butter. Ooh, 
dude, this is really good. This fish is really, really good. Woo! You see the skin? Nice and crispy on the outside. Now I'm going to get the inside fat part to cook down. All right, it's done. Now come with me. I want to show you one more thing. You guys see what I see? Some crispy skin. But this skin is not only skin. It's got a little meat on it. That's going to be so good. And this is already good. I already tried that. But now check this out. So this is the idea I had the other night. Well, I already tested this, right? And it tastes, tastes good, man. It tastes good. It tastes even better right out of the butter, actually. But it's a little salty. I wasn't expecting it to be salty. But, you know, sometimes people dip fish in soy sauce. And I was thinking the salinity of the water here is like the biggest dipping bowl you've ever seen in your life. So it is a salty already, but I still want to try it. I'm going to dip it in the salt water. Let's see if that adds. No, that's not very good. That's a horrible idea. I don't know why I thought of that. I'll try it again. Yeah, that just makes it taste fishy. <laughs> Actually, I prefer this fish just boiled in butter rather than pan fried in butter. That's, that's good. Let's try the skin and the crispiness. I would eat that for sure if I had a little sauce, a little sweet chili sauce or something. Now somebody's frantic about his wallet. That's really good. I like that skin. Crisped up. So funny, dude. And I couldn't, I didn't think I could find this guy's uh, information, but I searched him up online and I found his Instagram. I just texted him. I said, hey, I think I found your wallet on Highway 1. Can you message me back? He messaged me back in all caps. Wow, dude, I'm literally looking right now. Where are you? I told him I'm in San Francisco. He said he's just leaving Santa Cruz right now. So funny. Actually, period, are you headed up Highway 1? Question mark. I can wait in Half Moon Bay at the More for Less gas station. I'm gonna meet this guy up at the gas station, give him his wallet back. I think I just saw him pull up in a motorcycle. Had that motorcycle stuff in the in the wallet, so it probably is him. What's up, dude? Wow. You are a lifesaver. All good, man. No, not no, all good. good. Don't worry about no, it, dude. Let me do your cash, no, that's bro. cool, bro. Don't worry about it, man. No. It's all good, man. Don't worry, dude. Some, some, some money, no, it's okay. Seriously. Some people have returned my wallet when I lost it. No, don't worry please, about it. No, please. it's cool. It'll it's make cool. Me feel better. It's all right, It'll man. Make me feel no, better. it's cool. It's cool. It's happened to me before. You people sure? returned it to me. Yeah, it's all this good. This is crazy, dude. I literally texted my dad earlier. I like cancel all my cards. Oh, you did already? I, oh, I, sorry. I locked them. Oh. Okay. I, I messaged you on YouTube. I, I think I, I found you on YouTube. It. Oh, I, 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 that's that's you. the first notification I got. I was yeah. like, bro, there's just no way. <laughs> that was yeah. really funny. You're a lifesaver, dude. dude I'm I, good, man. I don't know how to thank you, but yeah, don't worry about I'll it. I'll pay it forward. You okay. sure I can't buy yeah. it? Like, yeah, yeah just pay it forward to school. All right, man. Yeah. Yo, thanks, right, dude. Have a good night, okay? You too, man. All right. That always feels good. I've had people return wallets to me too in the past, so that's that. And he doesn't have to cancel all his cards anymore.